Welcome to our service in this Easter season from the Diocese of Blackburn. Our theme today is meeting Jesus. Welcome if it's your first time joining in a Christian service. Welcome if you've been going to church for years. Here's a definition of church that I love. It's from Rome Williams, who used to be the Archbishop of Canterbury. Church happens when people gather around the risen Jesus. And that's what we're about this morning. The Bible tells us that the risen Jesus, he fills the universe. There's nowhere or no one too far away from him. This is coming to you from the confines of my study. I can't impress you with fine buildings or great music or charismatic speaking on a big stage. But that brings me to you in my weakness. So maybe that strips us back to the essentials. Um, because we're here to meet with Jesus. So we're going to begin our service with an ancient prayer that's in, about inviting Jesus by his Holy Spirit, his breath, to open our hearts to him. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires to know, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> distraction in this lockdown time is playing garden football. Um, in, our, in the Duff household we have a daily tally of Parental United versus Sprog City with my two boys who are 12 and 15 um, who are much better at football than me um, and are keeping me very fit. Sometimes we manage to get a goal. Often it's wide of the mark. 
sometimes it's into the roses and sometimes it's over the fence into the neighbor's garden. And it can be like that in our lives, can't it? Especially in these times under pressure. Sometimes, yes, it's been a good day. We can please with what we've done, whether that's um, studying at school at home, whether that's working at home. Maybe you're out on the front line as a key worker at the moment, and that is adding particular pressures. But sometimes we end up wider than the mark, don't we? Sometimes we cause pain and the thorns in our own lives threaten to spoil it for everyone else. Or sometimes in a moment of anger or desperation or frustration, it's as if we've kicked the ball out of the garden altogether. Through the centuries, Christians have found that by naming the ways that we miss the goal, naming the ways we sin, can bring the darkness and likes to nestle in us into the light. And we can ask for Jesus to break its power over us and to forgive us. And that's what we're going to do as we pray now in some, again, some ancient words of our confession. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we've sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to, to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And our special prayer for today, uh, which is the third Sunday after Easter. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life. Fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now, I've invited my husband, uh, Jeremy, who I normally keep away hidden, um, to do our gospel reading this morning. He is um, Principal of St Paddens, which is um, uh, the church in Wales's um, training institution, so he works across Wales. And uh, the passage he's actually going to be reading is a, a passage he's also written a book on, and I'll speak about that um, later on in our services. So over to Jeremy. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about 10 miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem and do not know these things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they'd seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Jesus said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? 
And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, it is nearly evening, the day is over. So he went in to stay with them. And he was at the table with them. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began it to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Come down, O most powerful Holy Spirit, and subdue us. From heaven, where the ordinary is made glorious, and glory is but ordinary. Would you open our eyes to see the wonderful truths in your word? And would you bathe us with the brilliance of your light, like to you? Amen. In our reading this morning, we find this couple walking along the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus on the very first Easter day, trying to make sense of all that's happened. Hopes have been crushed. Jesus was a prophet, powerful in word and deed. We hoped he was going to be the one to redeem Israel. They've been bereaved again. We went to the tomb but didn't find his body. And strange things are happening. The women told us they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. They kept talking things over, trying to put some certainty back when all the certainties had been shaken. A lot in our newsfeed at the moment is trying to put some certainty back when all the certainties have been shaken. Trying to uh, desperately imagine life after the coronavirus, life after the lockdown. We want to know what it will look like. This week I even read an article telling me what the world would look like in 2070. We don't know what it will look like. We live in uncertain times. But in all this shaking, we might not have many clues about the future, what it will look like. But here are some clues about what is happening now. Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. This is what I think is happening all over our nation at the moment. Jesus is right there, right alongside people who are desperately trying to make sense of everything, but they're kept from recognising him. Have you noticed the incredible creativity breaking out at the moment? Songs from the lockdown. The more confined we are, the more we reach out in creativity to communicate beyond ourselves, both out of hope, but also out of deep pain. There's an incredible crucifixion as well as resurrection going on in our country at the moment. This is what's happening spiritually in the pressure of the lockdown, in the tragedy of illness and bereavements, people are reaching out. There must be more to life than this, and we're finding ourselves astonished, aren't we, by how many views we get on our digital services, the, the takeoff of Alpha courses online or similar things. I was um, zooming into a hospital yesterday for the, to talk with the senior management and they were running out of holy water. <laughs> and at this time of shaking uncertainty, as it, it's as if with fresh air, less road noise, the airways less jammed that people are actually encountering Jesus. He's been walking alongside them for years. 
And across Lancashire, people are realising there is someone there who's calling them home. Here's an email uh, one of our vicars received this week from an NHS worker. I have known over the years that something was missing. I spent many years filling this hole with alcohol, which I managed to kick about 14 years ago. I tried paganism, anything apart from God. In the midst of all this, I have come to notice a small voice whispering inside me. This voice has been very noticeable on the trips abroad, strangely when we visited Rome, Sorrento, and last year Thessaloniki. While there, I have sought out quiet churches to visit occasionally and to somewhat embarrassedly pray in. This quiet but insistent voice thinks it's about time I came home. This is the voice of the Spirit of Jesus who is whispering across our nation. We miss you, please come home. And maybe for you today, perhaps for the first time you're realising there's someone with you, walking with you, prompting you. Coincidences keep happening. Well, I say that's Jesus. He's always been there with you. But maybe for the first time, your eyes are being opened. A good friend of mine rang last week. The night before, she'd been having a very sleepless night because not only is she self-isolating for three months, she's also got terminal cancer. And the next day um, was going to be her, the results of her test day. And in the middle of the night, she remembered some words I'd said about fear when we last met for coffee back in January. I said to her that fear is stalking our nation and it's starting to nest. What do I mean by this? Martin Luther, who was a German priest 500 years ago, said this, you can't stop the birds flying over your head, but you can stop them nesting in your hair. So you can't stop fears going through your mind. That's completely natural. It stops us getting run over by a bus. But you need to pay attention when they start to nest. I advised her that she could stop the fears nesting by actually asking them to go in the name of Jesus. At two o'clock in the morning, she remembered this and did this and she found a beautiful sense of peace like she was released from her fear when she ran the consultants in the morning for her test results he said the tumors had shrunk and she was ringing me from the hospital to thank me for praying i said it's not me <laughs> it's it's jesus maybe um you wouldn't have realised who he was, but in the middle of the night, I believe that peace came directly from Jesus um, with her and her anxious thoughts. That beautiful sense of peace, that is, is Jesus. When he was at the table with him, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us? Well, he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. So pay attention to the calling cards of the spirit of Jesus, those coincidences, those moments. Maybe when your heart is strangely warmed, when your soul reaches out beyond the lockdown, when you find yourself grasping for more to life than this, grasping for certainties. The thing is, Jesus is the only certainty in life, in death. And in these times, may you find that Jesus is already walking alongside you. That you can invite him in. You can invite him into your heart. And when you do that, he makes his home and he brings the peace from heaven. Let's pray. There are some of us joining me today, I think you've perhaps never said, yes, Jesus, come in to my heart. And maybe you'd like to take this moment in that secret place 
to, to recognize that he is with you. He's been with you all through these years. He loved you and he made you for the dawn of time. And if, if you're ready for this, I say, I, I pray with you this prayer to say, Jesus, thank you for being with me. Thank you for being with me all these years. I want to welcome you into my heart today. I turn away from all the things that have been dragging me down. And I want to welcome you. Maybe today you find yourself in just a place of acute fear. And I want to speak to that fear and say, I bind you up in the name of Jesus. You have no place. And I pray in those deep fissures where the fear is almost not just nested, but is almost corroded deep into your heart. That in those places, Jesus will pour his peace and his joy and his hope. And maybe there's some of us today who are desperately um, reaching out for certainty, reaching out for um, the future. I think there's some of you, I almost see you're, you're in this sea and it, or so you're almost drowning under a sea of chaos, really. And may, um, there's a beautiful story where Jesus um, was walking on the water and his disciple Peter longed to walk to him. But when he saw the winds and the waves, he started drowning. And maybe some of you are almost feeling you're on the edge of drowning today. Can you see Jesus' hand? He's reaching out for you. Would you take his hand? And may he pull you out of the wind and the waves and enable you to walk on the water with him. I think that some of you who I'm praying also for great faith to walk on the water. So many things are so uncertain. It literally is like walking on the waves. And I pray for a releasing of the gift of faith, the gift of faith that can move mountains so that you can step out and walk on the water, knowing that Jesus is by your side. He is the one who made the universe. He made the winds and the waves. And may you know his presence in the storm at this time. Now and always. Amen. Now when we join together um, in, in worship, even though we're joining across um, time and space at this time, uh, Christians throughout the ages have always um, gathered and um, uh, in, often encouraged each other by saying, um, restating the words of uh, the creed, what we believe together. You may be ready for this. Um, if so, please do join in. If, you, if you're not, then please just listen. But we're going to um, say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Now we come to our time of intercession as we pray for the world, for the church, and also for those who are mourning. The background track, which is just starting, is a chant from the Teze community in France. They were founded after the massive trauma of World War II, where Father Roger, a Catholic priest in France, had a vision of bringing together people from all languages and denominations. And um, you, may, you may find this yourself, but if you listen to their chants, they speak deeply of the work of the Spirit. This chant is about waiting for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, keep watch, take heart. Jesus invites us to keep watch over our world 
our church over those who are suffering and also to take heart. So look to him as we pray. At the end of each section of prayers, I'll say the words, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's pray. Jesus, we keep watch with you over our world today. We pray for the stopping of the coronavirus. We pray for all those in government making difficult decisions for great wisdom. We pray for all our key workers on the front line, particularly praying for those working in the NHS, for doctors, nurses, porters, cleaners, hospital staff, those who are facing great challenges at this moment. Jesus, would you walk along the corridors of our hospitals? Would you walk into those locked rooms where people are gasping for breath? And would you breathe on them your Holy Spirit? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our churches across Lancashire today in our continued lockdown. Jesus, would you walk through locked doors? Would you give people great courage? I pray for people to hear you and the voice of your spirit calling them home. I pray for us as church families that though that, that there will be doors open for people to come, literally come home and find their way to you. And I pray for those who are coming new to faith at the moment, that you will provide all they need, that you will be their coach, you will be their teacher. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for those who are mourning today, those who remember those we've loved and lost, who've died in the faith of Christ. Be with those who are bereaved. Would you be their good shepherd in the valley of the shadows? Would you draw near them with your rod and with your staff? And as they wait in agony, would you be so present to them? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally for ourselves, may we keep watch. May we take heart. May we offer ourselves living sacrifices in the confines of this situation we find ourselves in, in the pressures and the stresses. And may we find that you are able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who died for us. Amen. Now, as we come to near the end of our service, no um, church of service will be complete without the notices. So I've got some very own notices today. It may be as I've been speaking um, for the first time, you have thought I'd love to know Jesus. I don't think I ever really did. And can I recommend some results? There's plenty of things online, but a book that I find uh, really helpful, which you can also find online, is a book, Why Jesus, um, that comes from the Alpha organisation. Um, there's lots of other things like this, but can I recommend you, you, you dig this out? And it, it'll help you understand and encounter Jesus. Christianity isn't just about knowing things or doing things. It's about a relationship with Jesus himself. 
And then maybe if you've been a Christian for longer and you want to go and dig deeper, can I recommend a book um, written by my husband? It's called Meeting Jesus. He wrote it jointly with Joanna uh, Collicut McGrath. It's a fantastic book. It looks at the passage that we talked about today, uh, Luke 24, but also a number of encounters of people meeting Jesus in Luke's gospel. Uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. It hit a, a beautiful picture on the front. It's of the, um, the captures what we've been talking about today of how Jesus is like the shepherd who's longing to call his sheep home. And maybe this can inspire you in your thoughts and your studies. So we come to the final um, song in our, our hymn in our service today. Um, this is um, a song, it's a, it dates me, doesn't it? This is back from the 70s, this song. A song that when I discovered singing it at school, something in my heart warms because the words that were, I was finding myself singing, even though I wasn't a Christian at that point, made me look to Jesus. So Lord Jesus Christ, I have come to you. Thank you for joining us today. All that's left for me is to call down the blessing of Jesus as we leave. So now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. <laughs>